This video is about using three values to identify forms, and I'm going to share some really bad paintings of mine, and some great ones by others. Let's get started. Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach. When I have something really important to share, I put on my color dab shirt. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> That's because I make lots of color dabs. The reason I make lots of color dabs is because I'm always thinking about value. Value, value, value. It's the thing that most excites me. And value, of course, is how light or dark something is. So let's take a look at something. And um, I've illustrated this before using cups, a small cup, a medium cup, and a large cup. But uh, um, this time I'm gonna do it differently. So most paintings that people come to me with have a certain value range and it is often we're going to look at this through the value finder and it is often this i hope you can see that that is almost all the same value or how light or dark something is now let's look, look at the colors you can see that there's blue and we know blue is dark or darker than relative to other other colors it's an ultramarine blue this is a mix of orange, uh, red, excuse me, alizarin crimson probably, and over here is a Hansi yellow, kind of watered down. And I don't, I typically don't water down paint as much, but this is usually the way people present paintings to me. Um, and they ask what's wrong, and what's wrong is that it all reads as one value. Yes, you use different colors, but they're all one value. So what's important in a painting is to have a variety of values. So let's look at this one up here. You can see there's a dark to the far left, a medium in the middle, and a light on the right. You can, so there's a value range. But what's also important is to have a different ratio of value in each painting. In this particular one, they're almost all the same. So what you wanna have is a ratio. That doesn't read real well, but come in real close. Yeah, you can see that the dark is the most and then to the left, there's a little bit of red. That red shows through. And then the light is the yellow. And now let's look at the proportion here. Here, it's mostly mid-toned, which is the red. And then there's quite a few of the lights and few of the darks. But you can see the ratios are different, and that's what matters. So it's really important to have a value range in your paintings. Now I'm going to share some really bad paintings of mine, and then I'm going to show some really good paintings of other people. <laughs> because I don't mind being a guinea pig for you, so you can see where I'm coming from and why value matters so much. So let's get started. So this is Madam X, done by John Singer Sargent. This is an oil painting, but you can see the ratio of values here. He has mostly darks and then a few mid-tones, and then lastly the white. And because of that ratio, the white, as well as his X1 painting, it just looks spectacular. Here's some, some bad examples now. This is a bad example of painting a mine. It's all pretty much mid-tone ranged. If you were to hold the value finder up, you would see. Even though I'm using different colors, everything is about mid-value. There's just not a strong enough value range. Here is another one coming up that I did before I understood how important that value range was. I was just too interested in color. And again, this suffers from the same problem. It doesn't have a strong enough value range. In my opinion, you know, this is all opinion. You know, you do, you do what makes you happy. The next one coming up also suffers from not a strong enough value range, but more than that, there's value confusion. It's too, everything is a bit scattered about. You're not sure where to focus it just becomes an overall variety of color. So it, even though the values are a little bit better here, um, it wasn't, it, you can tell it's just not planned out very well. This one as well, uh, everything is, oh boy, it's almost, it's almost all the same value and that value tends to be kind of dark and there's no value patterns to follow that make any sense. So the eye just gets hit with, well, it's kind of nice colors, but it's confusing. Here's another one that's visually confusing because of, of the values that I picked. Um, it's, it, it just reads as an abstract, even though the value range is good, I have to say. I like some of those rich darks, but it, it doesn't read as a successful painting because the values end up being confused confusing. Instead of identifying forms, it ends up confusing the eye. 
And here's another case where, yeah, I have the value range, but not in the correct order, not in the correct places, not in the correct ratio. And so it doesn't read as form. Here's a, an example where I got it right. It's simple and clear. It's mostly mid-toned, a few whites, and a few darks. But that one, I felt like, really works. The more you can kind of look at your subject and simplify so that you can identify those ratios and then apply them, the more likely you are to have a painting that reads as something that is recognizable. Here's another one where darks are kind of um, take over in terms of form, and it was a, a snowy slope is what it is. So it's pretty simple, but could have been confusing if I didn't have my values correctly identified. Here's another one which doesn't have a lot of darks, but the few darks that it does have are really, really important. And because there aren't many darks, very few darks, they kind of have more impact, which you can see in that liquid inside the, the jar. And now here's another example where the value is, although the I don't have the very dark darks in this painting, they are the darks are relative to what came before. So there are few darks, and then everything else <clears throat> reads as either a mid-tone or a white. So darkness is only relative to uh, what's light and what's dark in a painting. And here's a white form. Yeah, it's dark around the form, but the reason that the uh, flower has any form at all is because there is a strong value range and a adherence to making sure that the, the whites and the mid-tones read correctly. Here's another really high key painting. This was a girl carrying a goat. This painting just kind of cracks me up. But my point is, it's high key. There's no, The darkest dark is not very dark. So you can paint in a high key, but you just have to make sure that you have lights, mediums, and darks relative to each other, and then you'll have a more successful painting. The next is a Susan Abbott painting. I picked a couple of her watercolors because she is my mentor. She can do no wrong. Everything she does is perfect in my book. And just look at the value range going on, as well as the masterful work of watercolor. Here's another one of hers in the sunny Bahamas. I mean, I mean for me, this is, this is the holy grail. Just such control over her color and her mixes and her values that a pretty complicated scene but the eye takes it all in and understands what's going on. This is by Karen O'Neill. She's an oil painter, and uh, she tends to paint in a high key, so I wanted to include her. You know, most of this painting is mid-toned, yeah. But that dark little swipe, a couple of those dark little swipes are really, really important. Every stroke she makes is truly important, and uh, she does very carefully decide before she paints exactly What's, what color she's going to mix, what direction the stroke is going to go in, and considers the overall impact of uh, the brightness and dullness of color as well. The next is Carol Marine, and I just thought this one really shows clearly just a few darks, mostly mid-tones, and a few whites. It's just so carefully done, so simply done, but your eye is very happy to be in that world. It makes sense. There's no confusion. You know exactly what this is a picture of. She has mastered her values so very well and put them in a, in a way that is logical and makes sense. The next one is also by Karen Marine. These are wash paintings. And this is a bend in a stream, but it just can show you how a very few strokes and the right values assigned to those strokes can create form. And the next painting is a painting that I own of Carol Marine's. Uh, it's a gouache, and this is a white cat. But here's a really good example of where most of the painting is white, surrounded by mid-tones and very few darks, which is a really hard ratio to carry off. But Carol Marine can do it. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint's wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.